and they want to train with me. We all know I'm, I'm trying to obviously uh, deload them as much as I can and give them a break, but you know, they also want to train. Do you think that, you know, the fascia system, the way we're trying to go about this training and invoke it now into our, our training programs, do you think that will help cut down on some of these soft tissue injuries, which are probably the most common for a lot of the overuse uh, athletes out there? Yeah, it, it very well could. And that's a loaded answer because it, it, it depends. I sound like a politician now, right? It depends. I know, it depends. That's okay. Yeah, it depends. But here's what it depends on, I would say. It depends on recovery inter and intra session. Intra session means within the same boat. So if, you, if someone's doing wind sprints, right, and there's not enough neural recovery and, and metabolic recovery, we're going to know, right? Because, you know, you do something for 30 seconds and then they can't repeat it. They need substrate back. They need fuel back. So you give them two minutes, three minutes, whatever, they get T to the half or half their energy back and then they can kind of you know, manage that and then they can do it again. So when we think about recovery within a bout, the work to rest ratio of intervals is typically on the consideration of metabolic and nervous system uh, considerations. I'm gonna add a third one in there is fluid. So fluid needs to recover. And so with fascia for every 20 to 30 minutes of, of intense exercise, 10 ish, 15 minutes of, of recovery allows fluid to return back to the areas that it was pushed away from because fluid only goes where it's pushed. It's osmotic pressures, right? So water, blood, lymph, and interstitial fluids are going to be pushed away from high pressure areas. Contracting muscle is a high pressure area. So everything's pushed away and we need time for it to modulate and restore. And so we can do that through active recovery schemes after every 20, 25 to 30 minutes, somewhere in that window, uh, depending on how exhaustive and high intensity the work is, giving that amount of rest of about 10 to 15 minutes, maybe doing some compression, some vibration, some of these protocols that we know in our space uh, can actually help restore balance of the fluid. So that's intra session. Inter means between, you know, I've got, I'm playing on two basketball squads and two, whatever you say, you know, I'm a multi-sport, the bane of my existence growing up because I was the chubby kid that never played sport. But, you know, uh, I wish I was one of those people, but I know exactly what you're talking about. They can play all the sports and they go from one practice and they bike to the next practice and, and away they go. Um, that's, you know, how much total volume do I have? That cumulative stress week to week is allostatic load. And I need, we need to manage workloads, right? And so young kids can manage it better if their nutrition their sleep and their hydration is better. Uh -huh. But a lot of kids are playing game, video games till late at night. So now there goes their sleep. When they're in front of video games, they're not moving. So there goes their, like you said, their exposure to movement, that those lines of stress that we need. And a lot of times when they're playing video games, the choice of food that goes with it is not good. It's pro-inflammatory. So as soon as you have pro-inflammatory foods, uh, in order to combat that, biology will increase acute uh, inflammation. And if I'm eating bad food over and over again, that acute inflammation becomes repeated, uh -huh. right? And then it becomes chronic inflammation because the acute periods would never stop, right? So now you've got a chronic exposure, C-reactive protein measures go up, which is a systemic marker for inflammation. Under inflammatory mechanisms, inflammatory cytokines go up, um, killer cells begin to deviate, uh, white blood cell count goes up, when white blood cell count goes up, collagenase goes up because it's supposed to eat collagen as a way for tissue remodeling in the acute injured phase of the normal healing cycle, but it doesn't. So, you know, you got freewheeling collagenase as an enzyme that's up over time. And what does that do? Like Pac-Man, it starts eating collagen and that is deteriorating our chassis. And so we're not laying down more chassis because of lack of movement. And I'm just eating nothing but terrible food, which is now creating an enzyme response that's eating my chassis away. That's a recipe for disaster.